Now at 11, JSO says a teen was killed in a double shooting. What we're uncovering about how another young life was claimed by gun violence in Jacksonville. Three members of one family killed in a suspected DUI crash. What the sole survivor of that family has to say about the accused drunk driver. Next at 11. Live at 11, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax starts right now. And developing now, a teenage boy is dead. Another man is in the hospital after a shooting in Jacksonville's Hogan's Creek neighborhood. I'm John Bachman. I'm Tanika Hughes. According to Action News Jax records, this is the 23rd time a child under 18 has been shot in Jacksonville this year. Action News Jax, Ben Ryan is live along North Davis Street. Ben, police said that this is still very early in the investigation. And Tanika, all police know and told us right now is that there was an exchange of gunfire that led to a teen being killed and another man was shot. He is expected to survive. All has happened right along North Davis Street. You can still see police have the scene blocked off here. They're actually conducting what looks to be a, most of the investigation about halfway down this road right now where there's some other cruisers and officers down the road a little bit here. Now, in general, what police don't know is if the two were shooting at each other, if they were shooting at other people, if they knew each other at all and if there are any other suspects in the case. And if you look at your screen right now, you'll see the scene was much larger when we first got here a few hours ago. It's shrunk uh, since, but at one point, the police were investigating on the street off to our left that's next to us. They were investigating, looking for some shell casings in that area. Police said that they got tipped off about the shooting from JSO's shot spotter. Then they got a call about the gunfire in general. All this happened just before 3 o'clock earlier this afternoon. Afternoon, but it's a double shooting that has left a, a teenager dead. Another man, again, he is alive and he has been speaking with detectives, but police still need help with the investigation. Again, they say that they are speaking with the man who uh, is expected to survive, but they're asking that if you know anything about what happened here a little earlier on today, that you give them a call or you can get in contact with Crime Stoppers if you'd like to remain anonymous. For local coverage, you can count on. I'm Ben Ryan, Action News Jax. Tonight, a man died in a crash on Phillips Highway in Bay Meadows this afternoon. JSO says the driver of a BMW drove into the path of a Kia, and the two cars T-boned on Phillips at Bel Air. The driver up the BMW died. JSO says the other driver was not hurt. New tonight, family members involved in a crash last month that took three of their loved ones' lives are speaking out. Four people were in the car. Just one survived. Meanwhile, the man accused in their deaths went to court and entered a not guilty plea. Action News Jackson Annette Gutierrez is live on Merrill Road in Arlington where that crash happened. Annette, you spoke with the driver who survived the crash. John, Tanika, it's truly heartbreaking. This is actually where the incident happened. You can actually see the damage that it left behind. The trees are down in this pit. If you're walking the sidewalk, you can see pieces of glass and remnants of the car. So all that damage is still here. And that driver, Roberto Ramirez, we spoke with him. It was his birthday that day. And in his car were his wife, his nephew, and his mother-in-law. All of them passed away. It's been nearly a month since tragedy struck and took three innocent lives. On August 24th, Ramirez was driving his family home after celebrating his birthday. That's when an alleged drunk driver smashed into the right side of his car at Merrill and Hartsfield Road. I lost consciousness. It was very hard, very abrupt. Ramirez lost his wife, Yahil Perez, his mother-in-law, Marilena Hernandez, and his 21-year-old nephew, Oscar Rolando. Oscar was Elizabeth Luca's son. She was riding home with her husband and second son in a different car when she realized something was wrong. No one from the other vehicle was picking up their phone. And since they didn't answer their phones, her family looked on the GPS and saw that there had been an accident. Luque's niece confirmed they were the ones in the accident. Officials pronounced two of them dead at the scene. Ramirez and Oscar were rushed to the hospital. When we arrived at the hospital, the doctor there and the doctor on call told us that unfortunately my son had not survived the impact. Roberto Ramirez feels awful knowing he is the only one who survived. Very bad. 
Now they want justice. Orlando Lopez Vasquez was the man driving the other vehicle. The crash report says he was traveling over 100 miles per hour when the crash happened. Vasquez was charged with three counts of DUI manslaughter and DUI with damage. Today, he pled not guilty to all charges. He shouldn't go unpunished, and justice should be done because more people could die from an irresponsible person like him. Now, Vasquez has had a history of drinking and driving. Back in 2020, he pled guilty to driving under the influence. Now, for this current incident, his court date was set for October 25th. For local coverage, you can count on reporting live in Arlington, Annette Gutierrez, Action News Jax. A new report ranks Jacksonville as the worst city for deadly DUIs in America based on population. Jacksonville ranked highest in the report from CellMax, which was based on data from 2017 to 2021 from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. From looking at the data, I do think that there's a lot of deadly crashes because, you know, you have uh, cities that have a lot higher population and they have less deadly crashes than in Jacksonville. The numbers also show the deadly DUI trend line in Jacksonville is increasing. First, the weather team looking at a brand new track for the tropical disturbance in the Atlantic. Now, for Northeast Florida, it will be like a nor'easter. I'm here in the First Alert Weather Center with Action News Jack's First Alert Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. And Mike is looking like some rough surf and, again, dangerous conditions at beaches. Yeah, in particular, this will likely become Ophelia in time here over the next day to day and a half or so, Tanika. And as that starts to make its move to the north and northwest, the biggest impacts are going to be north, up the coast from Jacksonville. That's good news for us here at home. Have Having said that, we still have to deal with the um, potential for rip currents and the dangerous conditions that we're going to have at our area beaches. There's the updated track just in from the National Hurricane Center, which takes it into North Carolina on Saturday as a pretty formidable tropical storm. And then right up the coast all the way to Chesapeake Bay, tropical storm watches and warnings have been issued along with the storm surge watch while we here at home get that northeasterly wind of onshore gusty winds, rough seas and surf. We'll talk about the waves and the rip currents. The nice temperature dip on the back side of this storm system, at least for a bit anyway, and your Jags kickoff forecast. The family of a Jacksonville teen impregnated and killed by her uncle is reacting to today's guilty verdict. We brought you the reading of the verdict against Jonathan Quiles live on Action News Jax at 6. He's found guilty of sexual battery and two counts of murder. Prosecutors say Quiles confessed to killing Ayanna Sawyer and then putting her body in a dumpster. The jury spent 62 minutes deliberating after hearing testimony for six days. The family of Ayanna Sawyer issued a statement through their lawyer saying, quote, Jonathan Quiles has now been found guilty of murder and will go back before a jury to determine his fate on earth. But he chose to end Ayanna's young life. He was a predator and the jury saw that with ease. We are grateful. Please keep our family in your prayers. Action News Jax is working to find out more about the two suspects that FHP says they arrested after a chase on I-10. These are pictures of a man who ran away from the scene and managed to evade capture for about six hours. A woman was detained right away. Their car was cornered by troopers on I-10 just west of 301. The Action News Jax Skyvision drone flew over that scene. Troopers say the driver was going more than 100 miles an hour on the shoulder of I-10, getting around other cars. Troopers say the driver had warrants and he will also be charged for reckless driving and fleeing. A controversial project at the Ponte Vedra Inn and Club is a step closer to final approval. Today, the St. John's County Planning and Zoning Board unanimously approved a proposal to renovate and add buildings to the resort. One new building will be 50 feet tall. That's more than the 35-foot limit for most of Ponte Vedra Beach right now. Lawyers for the developers say they've already scaled back their plan to accommodate complaints from neighbors. We have already made concessions to building height out of respect to the people at the Carlisle. A final vote on the project is expected in November. New at 11, leaders in St. Augustine are going to work with the Army Corps of Engineers on ways to prevent flooding. That first step is a feasibility study for Back K, which can often flood into St. Augustine's historic district, as well as Davis Shores and Western San Sebastian. The next workshop on the topic is Wednesday, October 4th at City Hall. The Army Corps of Engineers will present the study at 6.30. At 7, there will be a public workshop, followed by a question and answer session from 8 to 8.30.
Tickets are still available for the Sing Out Loud Festival in St. Augustine. The music starts at 6 tomorrow. The Black Keys headline Friday and on Saturday is Mumford & Sons. Festival's happening at Francis Field. So remember, West Castillo Street, Riberia Street, and Orange Street will be closed for parts of Friday and Saturday. The historic downtown parking garage, marked with the P here, is closed for the festival. A St. Augustine man who survived more than 30 hours on his capsized boat off the coast of St. Augustine got a chance to thank his rescuers today. Charles Gregory got to thank the Coast Guard sailors who helped him out in August. The Coast Guard brought the type of plane that helped him help find him so he could see that up close today. Gregory says he's recovered from his ordeal, which had him unable to walk for several days. It's a very odd feeling knowing that you're going to die before you have any of the symptoms. Commander Nick Barrow, who was a search and rescue coordinator for the Coast Guard, says typically when people are out that long, things don't turn out well. It's remarkable, really. Gregory says he is counting his blessings after being rescued. From the Ashton News, Jack's First Floor Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burris, tracking some rain right now offshore. How much that impacts your neighborhood as we go through the early morning hours in your First Floor forecast? It's in a few minutes. Coming up, two stories you still haven't seen on Action News Jax. First, the site of the Parkland School shooting will be torn down. The decision school leaders made today on the timing of that demolition. Then, two women now facing criminal charges for stealing from a domestic violence charity. How this case impacted shelters for abused women across Florida. More local stories straight ahead. Next on Action News Jax. Two at 11, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida will be torn down at the end of the school year. The Broward County School Board made the decision this afternoon. A gunman killed 17 people and shot 17 more on Valentine's Day 2018. Victims' families were allowed to visit in July and collect items belonging to loved ones. One father said the school looked like a war zone. It's unclear if the site will become a more <clears throat> memorial. Two former leaders of the Florida Coalition Against Domestic Violence are now facing criminal charges. 54-year-old Tiffany Carr was the group's CEO, and 57-year-old Patricia Duarte was the CFO. Investigators say Carr and Duarte stole more than $3.7 million from the charity. The Florida Coalition Against Domestic Violence was supposed to pass state and federal funds to domestic violence groups across Florida. Governor DeSantis ordered an investigation into the charity in 2020. The FDL started a criminal investigation in 2021. Later that year, the governor ordered the charity to be dissolved. A local state lawmaker and two civil rights groups are teaming up to address racism in Jacksonville in response to the racially motivated killing of three people in Newtown last month. Florida for All and the Jacksonville Community Action Committee are asking the city of Jacksonville to take three steps to address racism and boost the black community. First, they want an anti-racism task force. Second, they're asking for a public safety committee made up of citizens to review public safety strategies. State Representative Angie Nixon is the head of Florida for All. Her group is also pushing for a third item, a people's budget. Prioritizes addressing inequities in the, new, the Newtown area and other black communities in Jacksonville. Nixon says she and others will speak about the petition at Tuesday's city council meeting. Leaders of Florida State University system took steps to enact the new bathroom rules required under state law. The rules require designating bathrooms as exclusive for males, females, or unisex single stall bathrooms. The rules punish university staff who violate the rules. The only professor on the University Board System of Governors voted against the rules, and she fears the rules will be used to harass people. In places where similar laws have been implemented, there has been an increase in harassment of people who are using or attempting to use the restroom. The Board of Education passed similar rules for Florida's public colleges in August. A new report by First Amendment group Penn America says Florida leads the nation in book bans. And Clay County leads Florida, thanks to the efforts of one local father. We moved 192 separate titles from this community schools, 42 schools until recently. They're all porn. I told you last month, Bruce Friedman is responsible for one-third of all book challenges in Florida. Penn America says 75% of banned books are marketed as young adult books. Many include sexual encounters or touch on race and LGBTQ topics. Florida has really active pressures at play right now that are squeezing school districts and, um, and you know, pr pressuring school districts to remove books from classroom and school libraries. Penn America says Florida accounted for 40% of all books banned in America in the last year. 
Tonight, a former Jags player doing good in the neighborhood. Lonnie Martz, who played for the Jags in the late 90s, hosted a gala to benefit his mentorship program for boys. Action News Jack's Don Lopez was the MC for the event. A generous donor gave a $100,000 gift for the program. Well, FEMA and the state of Georgia opened a disaster recovery center in Glen County. The center is at the Ballard Park Gym on Nimitz Drive in Brunswick. It will be open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. to help people recover from damage from Hurricane Idalia. Now, it's the chief, Jacksonville's most accurate chief meteorologist, Mike Burrish. Speaking of the tropics, we have a disturbance right now to the east of Florida. Low pressure and very poorly organized for the moment. Over the latest First Alert weather is at ActionNewsJax.com. You can download the free the First Alert weather app. And tomorrow morning, Garrett Biedenbaugh with your First Alert forecast. A windy Friday. We'll start out with a few showers, especially from about I-95 to the beaches early in the morning, but that'll quickly clear out. And the rest of the day has got a lot of sunshine and temperatures really quite mild, 80 to 85. Well, we'll have the latest on anything that breaks overnight on Action News Jax this morning. It begins at 4.30 on Fox 30 and 5 on CBS 47. Today, Navy installations across America remembered sailors who died in the line of duty. Let's take a look at some pictures now from Bells Across America. And this is a service that happens at Naval Station Mayport. During the ceremony, the names of fallen soldiers are read and then a bell is rung in their memory. This is the seventh year for the event for those Gold Star families, and we just honor their service. Yes, definitely, and this is a proud military town, and we certainly appreciate everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight on WJAX and WFOX-TV. Have a great night.